Alright guys, the dark pass of Ralph Barbosa. Who's Ralph Barbosa, guys? One girl. But in the thumbnail, yeah, like they have pictures of him like having gang tattoos and stuff, so it makes sense for him to cover those tattoos in a presentation, right guys? I don't know who this is though. Battle bar. I was like, hey, what's up? What are you drinking? She was like a crown and coke. I was like, nah. Oh, he's a comedian. Okay, okay. I mean Content creators are often comedians. It's like, you know, quite often. Quite often are they comedians, right guys? Nice. <laughs> that was as far as I could afford to go. <laughs> but then I told myself, I shouldn't overthink it. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go for it. And I said, could you buy me one too, please? I'm Ralph Barbosa, thank you guys so much. I'm only here because I'm a loser in, in my world. And my uncle, my mom. Okay, okay. No commentary yet from a commentator, but I'm sure there'll be some. My brother got my dad into, they were, they were drug dealers. Like sold like all sorts of drugs. My uncle. Snap, bro. I, I, I do not know what it's like growing up in that kind of a environment. It was like a right hand man for, for like a cartel in Mexico. Oh shit. Yeah. The multi-billion dollar industry of narco trafficking is one of Mexico's biggest exports. We were like spoiled. No matter where we lived, we were always like so taken care of. I, I had like all the video games. I had like so much clothes. Like my uncle had a Corvette, a B. Dang, bro. That's um, quite a lot of money, right, guys? BMW, like, I'm telling you, we, we lived like kings. But when that all oh. BMWs and everything, guys, every single video game, and. I had a few video games, but not every single one. Came to an end, a fucking sad ass end. Uh, my dad started remodeling houses, and he would also paint cars because he had a body shop for <clears throat> And one day, like four years after he had quit, uh, he was like running a job site, and like agents, federal agents, just showed up and were like, "Yo, you're under arrest." You know, I was still a kid when they got caught up with that stuff, and dang, so he changed his life, and he got caught afterwards, guys. I don't know exactly. It, it really did traumatize my family a lot. So I remember trying to sell weed for like three weeks. When I, when I was fresh. I As I never tried to sell any uh, substances growing up, I was, uh, I was soft, I guess. Uh, I feel like I couldn't make it, guys. I, I, when you're, when you're, I, was a, I grew up as a gamer my whole life, guys. I, how am I going to sell substances? I'm good on that. You know what I mean? That can risk, like, penalties and stuff. I know I sound, like, super soft, but it's true. It's true, right, guys? Out of high school, I think this is, like, right before I, I even tried my first open mic. My, my cousin, like, my, my uncle's oldest son, who's, like, my big brother, whatever, you know, he's he's always been in and out of street shit, too, you know? Yeah, yeah. At this time, he's he's into some, some street shit. I, I, I went with him one time. He was, like, picking up, like, like a pound of weed from this dude. I was like, yo, do you think that he would sell me some? Or like through you or something? Well, I'm glad he's no longer, you know, it's a dangerous lifestyle and he's no longer like involved in it. Something, you know what I mean? And he's just like, my cousin was just like, man, are you serious? Like, I was like, yeah, was like, just give me a little bit. I think I, I, think I could sell some, you know what I mean? And for like a good two, three weeks, I think I made him a lot of money. Like I was surprised at how many people would just buy weed from me. And I was just like, oh, I'm gonna stop. After three weeks, I'm not gonna lie. I I was a uh, you know, I was a customer back then, bro. I, I I bought I bought it quite often, like super super often, guys. Like I, I was heavily addicted in my, especially after graduating high school, because I, I I started selling my RuneScape gold and I had like unlimited supply of it, man. I. It's pretty rich. Or I thought it I was, was like, rich. I'm good. And he was like, why? I was just like, I feel like I'm not going to want to learn a skill if I keep doing this. Like, And this is right when my uncle and my dad had like literally four months ago had just, their, their trials done, they just turned themselves into the prisons they're going to. Like, you know, people on my mom's side are in prison. Hey, bro, so he's getting, he's getting, 
into life again, bro. He was following in the footsteps, man. Not the best idea, I think. And or have already been killed. My dad's in prison. Like, what if I end up in jail? And like, if I get caught, even even with just like, even if I just got caught with some small time shit, I know my family's gonna be real like devastated and shit. You know what I mean? Every male is in prison. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dang, bro. That's not the lifestyle I want, bro. I got, I had a, I had a pretty long stay in jail, but. Uh, I straightened up right after that, guys. Right after that. Hold on, let me pause it. So I was just like, nah, I shouldn't do it. When drug dealers call you from prison, they always ask the same question. They're always like, who would have thought I... Guys, I, I can't relate to what he just said there, guys. Can anyone let me know in the comments below? He just said when drug dealers call you from prison. Okay, okay. Go from driving to Benz to sleeping in a cell. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> why we asked you to stop. <laughs> I'm like the Corker Romano, Brother Fredo, like, dumbass. Like, the fact that comedy's working out for me now, now they're just like, yo, good job, Ralphie. But, like, for the longest, they're just like, F oh, that, If there's any sign that, you know, he just gave a hint to his whole audience right there. Fucking moron. But I don't like, think that... <laughs> I'm the one guy in my family. Anyone know who this is, though, guys? I didn't hear about him until this video who like finished high school and they're just like he's a pussy like <laughs> they my my grandpa had like a job like uh a job and doing like sheetrock and stuff yeah. like just, he's probably the one guy in our whole family who had, had a like job. a job yeah? yeah my my parents were born here but i was raised by my grandparents my mom was living with us and then she moved out i stayed at my grandma's I lived with my mom for a while, too, and she was cool. She never really kept my dad around, but she always kept father figures around. Now, I have brothers and sisters, but they're way younger than me. For a long time, I was just by myself. My grandmother, who raised me, she's a huge fan of... Dang, bro, I didn't think it was just gonna be a compilation of, uh... Like, without commentary, guys. But, hey, we're here to add the commentary. But, yeah, I would much prefer, like, you know... A video essay kind of style video where there's commentary you know what i mean comedy if you would have told her that one day i'd be here on the tonight show with jimmy fadden she probably would have said okay because she doesn't know english i had like all sorts of different jobs i think when i was 12 i had my first job I was washing dishes at a marisco's restaurant i also was a barber i was painting cars for a long time my, my dad ran a body shop yeah his younger brother my uncle Worked there for like years and like learned, taught himself how to paint and shit, and he yeah. taught me. I've been going out to eat by myself lately, but I'll take my notebook with me so I can write little joke ideas. And I know uh, by the thumbnail, it had like some tattoos. I thought he, he, he actually got like arrested or something, guys. It looks like he just, you know, got a job and stuff. What is like in different parts of town, sometimes people will try to guess what I'm writing in the notebook. Like whenever I'm in hood type areas, people are usually like, Oh, he's writing raps. Okay. But whenever I'm in like a nice uptown Starbucks, then people are like, oh, he's writing raps. What the heck? Guys, would you think he writes raps? I think he might be like a business person or something if he was in a Starbucks. Setting also, you know, that is a factor. I was nine years old when I found oh, yeah. my, my uncle's DVD of Chappelle shows. My uncle, who I'm telling you, is like, fucking huge comedy fan he loves comedy yeah so he always had like the Chappelle show on dvd yeah and um he like left one at my grandma's house one time and i was i was like i don't know man like nine or something yeah so i started watching it you know it's fun i was like bringing all my friends over to watch Chappelle show Chappelle show guys this is one of the iconic clips, man. This is one. This is one part of the show I remember, guys. I used to watch this when it when it aired. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Rick James, bitch. Yeah, remember that as well, yo. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. And then one day flipping through the channels on Comedy Central, because sometimes I'd catch it on on TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. One day he came on, and I was just like, "Oh shit, Chappelle show." But it was he just kept by... talking, and I was yeah. just like, yo, when's he going to do skits? What the fuck? Yeah, 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 yeah. But then I just kept watching it, and I was just like, oh, shit. It's just like stand-up comedy. Like, uh, And I've seen it here and there, like on movies or whatever. Right? Yeah. But I'm just like, oh, shit. Like, he's a stand-up comedian. Yeah. And like, then I got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, I was probably the first ever person I ever saw doing stand-up. Yeah. I also grew up 
in big shit talking environments. Like I grew up at the barbershop where it's just it's not even funny anymore. It's just shit talking, shit talking. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? My my family's like that. I'm telling you, I was like the dumbass of the family. They're like always shitting on me. Bro. I grew up in a like a only child household, so I don't know. We didn't really have that many family growing growing up. I don't know. Most of my time was like spent alone, guys, not gonna lie. As soon as I got a laptop, thankfully I was able to get like unlimited entertainment and stuff. Opportunity to like, you know, do business as well. I got like my suburban friends too, but they're like college kid, preppy type people, very cocky. Like they can never answer questions by saying yes or no. They always gotta say stuff like, you know me, that's weird. <laughs> that is the strangest way to answer a question. <laughs> Talked to my buddy James. I was like, yo, James, a couple weeks ago, we were hanging out at that bar and you seemed to hit it off with that one girl. And I've been meaning to ask you, uh, did you two go home together? He was like, Ralph, you know me. You know me. Mm, didn't really know any college kids growing up, man. N literally nobody. Except like one or two people, man. I was like, dude, she's been missing for like 13 days, man. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't really watch that much stand-up stand comedy, guys. I don't know you at all. But this guy's going up on a Comedy Central, guys. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. <laughs> that means he made it, guys, right? Where did you start doing stand-up comedy at? In Dallas. Uh, at Backdoor Comedy. The little, it's, a little, it's a tiny little spot. It's run by this lady named Linda Stogner. She's really funny, real nice lady. That right there, you can only perform clean at, at, at their shows, at their open mic, it's clean. And I started doing the open mic and she started letting me like host or whatever on weekends, it was cool. She used to give me a lot of stage time. I love comedy so much that if I was doing sold out clubs or if I even got to do like, you know, some theaters one day, uh, it, it'd make no difference to me to go for well, I'm that. super glad you got like, you know, a creative outlet. He's so chill and humble and envious how he carries himself after everything he's been through, making his own path rather than following in his family's footsteps. Rouse a man, his future of Latinos com comedy. Yeah, he seems chill. At the podcast, if, you know, content creator goes on a podcast, you do get their, uh, you know, get, uh, you know, a, a lot of, uh, you know, speaking from them. But that's a video, like, comment, subscribe, check out Phony Hound, this Christian. Uh, see you guys next video. I do all my reactions live on Twitch. So come through, say hi if you're if you're interested, and I'll see you guys next one later.